lot of people have asked, you know, why we really started getting in the trailer business. And uh, I don't think our intent was to get in the trailer business. Our intent um, was originally to design a really nice aerodynamic trailer to haul our own Daytona Cobra Coupe. Well, and I remember we were driving around the country going to other trailer manufacturers and you were looking at what they had, you know, as we were trying to find a trailer for ourselves. And I remember you would just walk out and shake your head and say, how come nobody in the trailer industry understands aerodynamics? Yeah. You know, and then you disappeared in your office for a couple of days. And occasionally you'd pop out and ask for a popsicle stick or something and use some cardboard. And the next thing I knew, you'd walked out with this uh, prototype of a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's amazing how antique uh, trailer design is, is because obviously it was only designed to haul boxes or protos, and uh, it was the payload that the tr original trailers were manufactured for, and obviously that has nothing to do with automobiles because the proportions are slightly different, and um, consequently you're compromised all the time in weight and the amount of drag that's created with the uh, trying to push a regular box through the wind. So. In designing a trailer, it's very much like trying to design a race car. That you want to make it as light and as strong as possible, and also as efficient as you can, uh, with the lowest amount of uh, resistance uh, to the air, and uh, also rolling resistance on the ground. And it has to be really super uh, practical for one person to load and unload. And uh, I think the whole idea that you want to do is you want to make the trip from one place to another transporting a car as pleasurable as possible. <laughs> well, it's funny you, you mentioned the word pleasurable because um, it's, it's not just trying to minimize the pain of it when you tow with an air vault. It actually is a pleasure. Um, you know, I get calls every week by someone saying they've just arrived at a certain track or a certain event and that they're rested. Um, and they talk about how much fun they had every time they stopped at a fuel station. You know, they can't get away for like a half an hour because everybody wants to talk to them about the trailer. So right. it's, it's just a pleasure to drive. That is the yeah. word. I think that uh, once you've driven an Aeroball trailer for any distance at all and you realize how effortless it is to drive, especially if you're driving in crosswinds or headwinds or you're driving on a two-lane road passing a lot of big 53-foot trailers and stuff were blowing a lot of wind around and how little it affects the air vault that you really begin to understand what an advantage it is to have good aerodynamics in a trailer. It's just night and day over a conventional trailer where you're pushing so much wind. Normally a, a standard square front trailer, uh, when you get up to about 55 miles per hour, maybe 60, it'll automatically kick down a gear if you want to try to maintain that speed, of course your mileage drops off tremendously. So consequently you're fighting it all the time because you can sense how much wind that you're pushing. Uh, with the air vault, it's just effortless. You can run the car you know, all day long, 75 to 80 if you want. Uh, in fact, our tires are N-rated tires, which are rated up to 87 miles per hour, so you can run all day long much, much faster than you you don't really feel comfortable with it, anything else, and I think that's the thing, comfort. Well, and, and one of the things that I actually, it had to happen to me a few times before I could actually believe it, was um, when I tow through an uh, area that's experiencing high crosswinds, the tow vehicle I'm in is actually more stable when I'm towing the trailer than if I were to just drive through on my own. And I've mentioned this to other people and, and they get the air vault and they call immediately the first time after they've gone through a crosswind and said, I can't believe it, you were absolutely right. My, my vehicle is more stable when I'm passing trucks and going through a crosswind. So obviously, you know, obviously the front end shape and size, you know, frontal area, were important considerations when you uh, designed an aerodynamic trailer. What was the next second area that you looked at? Well, I think the first thing you have to look at is people say, well, did you, you know, uh, do this trailer in a wind tunnel? And you say, well, it's obviously impossible to really do it in a wind tunnel because it's the car that's towing the trailer that is uh, going to determine really how efficient it is. What you're trying to do is collect all the turbulent air that comes off the towed vehicle and collect that air back and reattach it to the trailer that we've got. And that's why that whole rounded front end on the car 
is uh, so superior to any car that's built with a diamond front or a slope front that has any angularity in it because any time the air hits that at any different angle, it's going to turbulate off that area and, uh, and so what you're create saying a lot is, of drag. What you're saying is V knows trailers are not aerodynamic. No, they, they, you, you'd think that they would have great penetration in, in an absolutely straight line, maybe so, but then the air gets back to the point where it transitions to the flat side and it begins to create turbulence again. Now, That's remember, why on our cars where it's completely round, the air stays attached. Well, I remember you, when you first saw the Venos trailers, you were like, air is not impressed by sharp corners. Right. <laughs> That's the thing you said. But the other area that, that you learned in your experience that was important to aerodynamics was the underside. Oh, yeah. That was really important. Uh, the, uh, the, the aerovol is fully skinned underneath. It's totally smooth. And the reason for that is uh, uh, I met John Pointer, who was the aerodynamicist who worked on the Chrysler Superbirds, the ones with the real high wing on the back end on it. And he was at that time working on the first Chrysler minivans, which is a real advanced design for Chrysler at the time. But I said, John, it's, you know, it can't be quite as exciting as working on the Superbirds. He says, well, it's actually quite a challenge. And I said, well, why is that? He says, well, you wouldn't believe it, but he says the most unaerodynamic thing on that trailer is the rear axle because it's a front wheel drive van, but they have this rear axle hanging down in the rear, and that's when the light went on because that's the way most trailers are. They have this axle hanging down in the rear, plus all of the ununiform shape underneath, which creates tremendous turbulence underneath. Well, and some even tow the ramps down underneath. And I'm right. like, oh no, stop adding stuff to underneath there. Yeah. All that air is catching on to the tubing of the chassis, to the axle, to ramps, whatever you're sticking under there. You think, oh, free space. Yeah. It's not. It's twisting and turning that trailer around. It's really making it a handling nightmare. Yeah. So people are, you know, look at tra trailers superficially, they don't realize that, you know, the air underneath the trailer is just every bit as important as what's going over the top. So even though we have a weight penalty in putting some, you know, belly pan on the trailer, it really pays off in smoothness on the highway. And it's as beautiful underneath as it is on top. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the car, when, they, when we build the trailers over here, the first thing that we do after we've got the main chassis assembled is we make the underside of the car up on the on the table on the assembly table and get that all built and that's taken off and then later after the whole trailer is back right side up that is reattached underneath so everything is fitted very carefully underneath the trailer. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So the aerodynamics are just superior. The other thing I wanted to mention because this is just brilliant and it gets back to your race car uh, knowledge is semi monocoque design. What does that mean? Right. Well semi monocoque is the essentially a term that means that you're trying to build a car as an external shape that uh, creates its own strength. We're not putting a bunch of inner structure inside which adds weight, which mo way most trailers are built. If you look at the inside, there's a bunch of steel formers that go on and then they pop rivet on uh, what they call a coil coat, which is a 50,000 aluminum which is painted, pre-painted on the outside and they pop rivet that on. And uh, so it, it, it's a very, very heavy, you know, uh, a cheap way to build a trailer. It's also not very stable. No, but yeah. One of our owners, before he became one of a uh, narrow vault owner, um, said that he'd gone to a plant uh, and look at another trailer, and the guy was spot welding the vertical frame members. And he asked the guy, "When you come back and finish that?" And he said, "Oh, <laughs> he said we can't make a solid weld." He said, "There's so much flex in our trailers." He said, "It'll break the weld." So we just spot welded. And that's been borne out by other people that look at our trailer and say, you know, it freaks me out when I look behind in my rear view mirror and I see, see my other trailer flexing as I'm going down the road. Yeah. So if you look at our trailer, for example, uh, all the skin is uh, 120 wall aluminum. It's that's, not really a skin. <laughs> yeah, it's, that is the structure. And then that long channel that you see down the side of the trailer that we put in there with a big press brake is what gives stiffness to that big long panel. So that all attached uh, to the lower frame, which is a fairly conventional, uh, made up of three by three aluminum tube. Everything on the trailer is aluminum with the exception of the axles and the front hitch. So everything else is aluminum. So we're only around uh, 23, 2400 pounds. 
well, depending on how you build the trailer. Well, and there's another exception too, and that's the roof and the fenders. They're yeah. made out of composite material, which is even lighter than aluminum. It's very strong. And what's great about having a white roof, for example, is it reflects the heat and it keeps it very cool. Yeah. That's one thing that we really learned from the first uh, 25 units that we made had an aluminum roof. The still, Mark 1s. The Mark 1s. These Mark 2s that are all composite with a white uh, gel coat on the top are very, very cool inside. So it, it makes a great place to hang out uh, at the races because you can go inside the trailer and it's quite cool. And then tell us about what the structure, so the, the side walls um, are their own structure because the bend, tell us what is that creates a structure for the roof. Because well, again, there's no framing members in the roof. Right. If you look at the front of it, obviously it's all completely round which if you know how strong an eggshell is, if you've ever tried to com compress it, that's almost impossible to do. But then when you get into the flat surfaces on the top, you'll notice that there are three fins running down the, uh, the roof of the trailer. That looks really trick and stylish, but actually it's an exoskeleton, which creates a triangular structure that goes all the way down the roof on the three sides. It gives it strength so that it doesn't have any bending to it. So by putting the structure on the outside and styling the structure, uh, we've got the advantage of having a great looking trailer, but also uh, structurally correct. And then of course that's all bonded to the outside skin. So that whole box structure is very, very strong. A lot of people uh, that make other trailers, for example, uh, think that there's an advantage because they have a side door so that they can get out of their car. Well, you don't have to get out of your car. Ours trailers are towed in with a uh, remote control electric winch, but by keeping that structure all solid all the way around, it makes the trailer much, much stronger. Well, that's like a coupe versus a convertible. Yep, you know? absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. so the other thing I wanted to mention was construction. Um, you know, there's not only that semi-monocoque design, but there also is the chassis, and a lot of trailer manufacturers, they take that main tube off the hitch coupler, they come back to the trailer, they hook you know, the coupler to the trailer. We take that main beam and come all the way down past into the axle area, so you don't have that flex and that stress on the front part of the trailer like you do with a lot of others. I mean, these things just do not wear. It's right. amazing. And of course, because it's all three by three structure all will together welded together and then on top of that we've got more 120 wall on the top which becomes all the webbing uh, that strengthens that and then for put, the floor and then that's the floor and then underneath we have the belly pan so <laughs> that three by three is sandwiched between two flat sections of aluminum which makes it an extremely strong uh, base structure you know you wouldn't even need all these side walls and the top and everything on it but uh, by adding all that it gives it a tremendous extra structure yeah, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was, um, so the trailer is engineered and it's amazing um, how it's built, but because we built the first trailer for ourselves and we yeah. had no intention of going into the trailer business, we, we built it the way we wanted to have it built and it comes with a winch with a remote control fob, so as Peter said, you don't have to uh, get out of your car and once you start winching in and out your car, um, you'll realize how kind of prehistoric it is to be driving your car in and out. Um, you're just in total control with that. Comes with 15 inch wheels and tires, as Peter mentioned, and speed rated tires. Comes with a full size spare. I was at a trade show the other day and I, somebody, a tire manufacturer approached me and I said, well, what speed rating do you have? And he said, M is in Mary. And I said, well, we use N. And he says, what about the spare? We could provide your spare. And I said, why would we want a lesser spare? You know, I just don't get the mentality of this, yeah. you know. Um, and we have, um, you know, uh, you can, we've got a switch at the door where you can turn on your reverse lights manually if you want some light out the back. So just all of these things that we provide because we couldn't build a trailer for ourselves, and then when we decided to offer it to other people who said this is exactly what we need, we couldn't strip it down of everything and then add all these things in addition. Every AeroVault is a great solution it's not a great start, and then you have to add these things to it. Yeah. It's just, it's built the way we'd like to do it, to support our own race cars when we take it to the track. And I think that that's the, uh, that's the feedback that we get from all the guys that have these track cars. And the, again, the advantage of being able to winch the car in automatically is if you go to the track and you have a problem with 
you know, a blown engine or blown gearbox or a suspension or whatever, you can't drive that into your trailer. You have to be able to push it in or you have to can winch it in the way we put it in and it really saves a real hassle on, this, on uh, maintenance, you know. Well, and of course your focus is always race cars, track cars, right. going to right. the track. Mine is more the show cars. So we have a lot of owners that have uh, amazingly beautiful Concord cars that take them to the show. And in fact, we have one owner, he, he wins all the Concours with his cars, and he said, I want to start a trailer Concours because I want to win those too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, it's, it, I love car season because every single week I get, the stories uh, oh, I get text messages, I get phone calls, I get emails with great pictures and great stories. It's so satisfying to provide you know, something like this that really changes your quality, um, you know, in, in the experience. Yeah. So, and that's why you can't get me out of the driver's seat. I'm always oh, towing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's you, why I have to load the cars and stuff. Gail can actually take my whole day towing and <laughs> load it, put it in the car, everything by herself in about 15 minutes. He doesn't really mean that like yeah, he says it, yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm, weird, I'm actually pretty confident. It's, it's one short <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right.